We've known this day was coming for a while, and as of today's Game Maker beta update, it's finally arrived. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and as of Game Maker IDE 2022.800.0.161, which comes with runtime update 2022.800.0.149, which funnily enough is also my Pokedex number. The 32-bit build tools for Game Maker games have been removed. You can no longer build 32-bit um, software using Game Maker. Everything you make from this point onwards needs to be 64-bit. This primarily pertains to 32-bit Windows, although the 32-bit Android export is also gone now. And uh, they've also finally removed the UWP export, which is the Universal Windows platform, as well as the, uh, the old Xbox One dev tools. As far as UWP goes, I doubt if anybody would even notice it's missing. The last time I made that wisecrack about UWP, several people did inform me that they did actually use UWP, but I'm not 100% sure if they were pulling my leg or not. And if you're an Xbox One dev, uh, they did they have added the newer version of the, uh, the Xbox One dev tools, which you're probably using already anyway. So a vast, vast majority of Game Maker users won't even notice that this change has been made, but there are a few um, there are a few additional aspects of the 32-bit Windows removal that I'd like to talk about. So by and large, uh, pretty much all computers that are in use today are 64-bit operating systems running on 64-bit CPUs. If you go to the Steam hardware survey, which is the, like the Steam, well, it's, it's, the, it's the data that Steam collects every few months about what kinds of hardware their users are, um, their users are running. And if you go to the OS version um, category, you will see that 32-bit Windows accounts for 0.22% of all users on Steam. That is one in every 450 users of Steam uh, on a 32-bit system. Everything else, virtually all OS X users and virtually all Linux users are on 64-bit operating systems already, and um, on the Windows front, only 0.22% of, um, of Windows users on Steam are running a 32-bit operating system. And that number is only going to go down because Windows 11 doesn't even ship a 32-bit version anymore. Meanwhile, in Game Maker, the 64-bit runner for Windows has been part of Game Maker for almost two years now. It was added in November 2020. And the 64-bit Windows runner has been smooth sailing since pretty much the very beginning. For the most part, the only change that you might notice in Game Maker is that if you have a, if you have a game, uh, this is my, uh, the demo program that I like to use often in, um, in Game Maker videos. If you go into Game Options for Windows, you will see at the bottom of this checkbox that's use the 64-bit Windows runtime. Um, if I were to run the game in 32-bit mode with that checkbox off, it'll look like this. And if I were to run the game in 64-bit mode with the checkbox turned on, it will look exactly the same. And uh, you really won't notice the difference. There are no uh, no difference in like game execution or anything like that. You really shouldn't notice a difference. All of the Game Maker runtime functions behave exactly the same in 32-bit as they do in 64-bit mode. In fact, you might see a small performance increase going to 64-bit mode because the 64-bit uh, the operating system has to run a compatibility layer. You can think of it as like a lightweight emulator for 32-bit software to make it work, which it doesn't have to do anymore if your game is running in 64-bit mode. Although please don't come away from this thinking that running your game as a 64-bit executable will magically fix all your performance issues because that's really not the case at all. Anyway, if I close out of 2022.6 and if I load the project up in the beta version of Game Maker Studio 2022-800-0161, and if I run the game, uh, we will see that it works exactly the same as it did before, as promised, as a 64-bit executable. But if we go to Game Options and if we go to Windows, then the 64-bit checkbox is no longer there. All of your games that you will build from this point onwards are going to be in 64-bit mode just by default. Uh, you'll also notice the absence of the um, uh, the Windows UWP export uh, options, which, once again, I'm sure is going to be missed by exactly nobody. So, the one place where this might actually become a problem, and I expect that there's going to be a very small but very vocal minority who's upset by this, is if you have a project which links to a DLL which was built as a 32-bit program, which was built using 32-bit uh, build tools, and I actually have a couple examples of that, but um, if you have, for example, the um, the old mstop4 fmod gms bindings, uh, this is a um, an interface between GameMaker and fmod that um, some guy named mstop wrote a number of years ago. 
And this was long before a 64-bit game maker was a thing, or at least long before the uh, the 64-bit um, the 64-bit game runner was a thing. Uh, the IDE has been 64-bit since the beginning of GMS2. Anyway, if I run the uh, the FMOD GMS demo using um, using 32-bit game maker using the 32-bit export over here um, in the old version. And we can uh, we can see that it's gonna work the pop-up box so that the uh, the extension was loaded correctly. And if you, uh, if you hit the space bar and play around with it, you can hear the game maker doing F mod things, as promised. While if I were to hit the 64-bit Windows runtime checkbox and run the game now, uh, run the demo now, uh, we would see that. Did I actually hit apply there? Because that should not have worked. There we go. If we try to run this uh, this FMOD demo in 64-bit mode, then we cannot link to the 32-bit DLL with a 64-bit executable, and um, the message box said FMOD GMS was not loaded properly, and uh, we will not be able to do anything with that extension or anything like that. And I think if we scroll up, we should see a bunch of uh, error, mes error messages spitting out uh, that tells us that we, uh, we were not able to link any of the DLL functions. And if we were to... Um, if we were to close out of this, and if we were to move on over to the uh, to the latest beta, if we were to just run the game, uh, we would see the error, and FMOD would not do anything. FMOD GMS was not loaded properly, and it will not uh, it will not run. And if we go over to Game Options for Windows, there is nothing we can do about that. We are simply out of luck. So in the case of this FMOD extension, we're actually fairly lucky because, well, one, the, the source is right here, the repository is right here. You could clone it and build it yourself if you wanted to. But also, um, mstop is still active in the GameMaker community, and um, this was at some point updated to include a um, just a 64-bit DLL. So if you wanted to use this FMOD extension in GameMaker, you would just have to use that version instead of, um, you know, the really old version. But other DLLs that were built for very old versions of GameMaker may not be so lucky. If you remember the bullet collision interface that I made videos for in GameMaker a long time ago, uh, that was a 32-bit DLL because that was made back in the GameMaker Studio 1 days. And the, uh, the DLL author Venomous has all but vanished off the face of the earth. So as much as I tried to keep it alive, that extension is pretty much a thing of the past now. And if you have a game that includes something like that, then you are either going to have to simply not update GameMaker past 2022.6, or you're going to have to start searching around for alternatives. Now with that in mind, I am glad that GameMaker is finally giving up the 32-bit charade, although I kind of wish that they had waited until the, um, the long-term support version that they have promised is out, so that anyone who is using a DLL uh, from the olden days that was built as 32-bit won't have any issues and they will be able to uh, at least make it to the uh, the long-term support channel. The stable release for 2022.6 has been somewhat infamously a little bit on the buggy side and I think the very small number of people who would have been affected by this change would have uh, greatly appreciated it if Yo-Yo Games just put this off for like three or four more weeks or otherwise to whenever the long-term support version comes out. But it is what it is. Uh, let me get out of there. If you want to uh, if you want to see what else is in the release notes for this beta update to GameMaker, I will have the release notes in the video description. Uh, this is a very long one. This one uh, features, I think, several hundred bug fixes between the uh, the runtime and the IDE. I'm not going to count all of these. Uh, this beta update does fix both a number of problems in Feather and a number of general crashes in the UI when you're doing things with the different editors. and. Um, the debugger had a number of issues in 2022.6, and it looks like a number of them have been finally addressed, as well as just all kinds of other things have been dealt with. So, I'm going to stop here. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. This hasn't really been a tutorial. This has really just been, like, if anything, a public service announcement. But one way or the other, I hope you all found this informative, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, GameMaker, Gunnar Clovis, KeyXE, Syndra Larson, Squarecrow, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support this channel yourself, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.